Dear Board of Directors, welcome to our evaluation of the Capstan Project. Standing in front of you today are Denise Dobrin, Beverly Horton, Jeffrey McLellan, Nicole Sylvia, and Janet Watt. Let us begin by providing you with our analysis of the overall market. Team Baldwin is now running a $100 million corporation that manufactures sensors. These sensors are devices that observe physical conditions and are installed into products our customers sell. Our company was created by the government when they split a monopoly into identical competitors due to operating inefficiencies and poor product choices. Customers had no other options and these issues had to be addressed. As we are working in a post-monopoly era, our company can no longer avoid these concerns. In order to maintain a competitive advantage, Team Baldwin must offer better products with lower pricing. Since the government split, we are competing against five other companies. We are broken down between the simulation teams, Andrews, Baldwin, and Chester, as well as computer-based teams, Digby, Erie, and Ferris. Each company has access to the newspaper called Capstone Courier, a year-end report on the sensor industry that includes the customer's buying patterns, product positioning, manufacturing capacity, and public financial information. Each year, Team Baldwin carefully reviews the Capstone Courier to help identify any gaps we are facing, what our competitors are doing, and how we can improve to maintain our customer satisfaction in the sensor industry. Overall, Team Baldwin has shown great improvement through our performance in comparison to our competitors. Throughout the simulation, we have focused on the needs of our customers, and this is shown through our December customer survey, as well as our customer awareness scores. In the latest round, we were ranked highest on the customer survey on three of our five market segments, low-end, high-end, and performance. In the end, our Capstone simulation project looks at three common areas, cumulative profit, stock price, and market share. Of the three simulation class teams, we rank number two, for which we are very pleased. Our cumulative profits in our last year were more than $55 million, with a stock price above 92. When looking at our progress over the duration of our project, we have shown great improvement to our company's presence in the sensor industry. In addition, Team Baldwin has focused strong efforts to the market share, and we ended with an overall result of 16.27%. In order to have a strong presence in the market, it's important to analyze which market segments will serve your company best. In the sensor industry, there are five market segments with top customer buying criteria. Traditional segment focused first on age, then price. Low end focuses on price and then age. High end, ideal position and age. Performance focuses mainly on reliability and ideal position, and the size segment on ideal position and age. Each market segment has specific customer buying criteria that allows Team Baldwin to better position our products within the market. Consistently, Team Baldwin has remained in the top product market for each segment. We emphasize the focus on research and development to align our products based on the customer's top expectation, following the customer survey for the previous year. Team Baldwin aligns their position in the market through all market segments, a broad differentiation approach. Now let's turn it over to Janet. Thank you, Nicole. Team Baldwin's initial strategy was broad differentiator. A broad differentiator strategy maintains a presence in every segment of the market. The company looks to gain a competitive advantage by distinguishing products with excellent design, high awareness, and easy accessibility. The company will develop an R&D competency that keeps designs fresh and exciting, allowing products to keep pace with the market offering improved size and performance. 
prices will be above average. Capacity will be expanded as higher demand is generated. The perceptual map was critical as Team Baldwin followed each product throughout the various simulation rounds as part of the broad differentiator strategy. We based our decisions on automation increases using this perceptual map. A comprehensive tactic approach was used by each of Team Baldwin's departments, research and development, marketing, production, and finance. Under research and development, we kept our existing product line. We maintained a presence in every segment. Our goal was to offer customers products that matched their ideal criteria for positioning, age, and reliability. Under marketing, we spent aggressively in promotion and sales in all of our segments. We wanted every customer to know about our superb designs, and we wanted to make our products easy for customers to find. We also priced at a premium. Under production, we grew capacity to meet the demand that was generated. After our products were well positioned, we investigated modest increases in automation rating levels to improve our margins, but never did we do that at the expense of our ability to reposition products and keep up with the segments as they moved across the perceptual map. And finally, under finance, we invested primarily through stock issues in cash from operations, supplementing with bond offerings on an ad-needed basis. When our cash positions allowed it, we established a dividend policy and began to retire stock. We were somewhat adverse to debt and preferred to avoid interest payments. We expected to keep assets and or equity leverage between 1.5 and 2.0. Thank you, Janet. Hello, everyone. I'm Denisa, and I will offer you an inside view into our thought process. I will discuss briefly the approaches and techniques we use for determining our sales forecasts, setting our promo budgets, choosing the best R&D investments, and making financial decisions. We realized quickly that accurate sales forecasts are critical to winning a strategy game such as the CapSim simulation. Sales forecasting assists with uh, determining the level of production and fixed capital expense. Capital investments for production consume a large portion of a company's assets. Producing too many items results in overstock, and producing too little results in lost market share and profits. Finding a fine balance between scheduling R&D improvements, choosing the right marketing strategy, appropriately scheduling production and suitably financing it all is essential to getting the optimal margins and the best sales results. For forecasting, our first step was always to check the courier. We would look at the competition, the sales, and the positioning, taking into account, among other factors, the customer survey, awareness, and accessibility ratios. Since our forecast was generally a combination between the base calculation method, which was our worst-case scenario, and realistic expectations, we found that calculating demand was instrumental. By multiplying last year's demand from the Capstone Courier report with the segment growth rate, we could obtain a presumptive demand for the upcoming year. Potential market share and a two-month cushion would then be included in our estimations for a more accurate prediction. Once the second step was completed, it was time to re refine the result even further. For compiling the final forecast, we would adjust each sales forecast making an educated guess based on competitive advantage gained from R&D improvements, pricing, promo, and sales budget. From an R&D perspective, we opted for an aggressive but thoughtful approach, allowing us to improve all products and still have a positive cash balance. The same considerations went into automation, TQM, HR, and finance. The last thing we wanted was to see Capstone's loan shark, Big Al, <laughs> because of inventory surprises or lack of funding. Automation and TQM go hand in hand and we invested heavily in both. TQM 
also proved beneficial for lowering R&D timetables, since we did want our products to be top-notch in concurrence with our chosen strategy. From a financial perspective, we leveraged stock and used long-term debt to finance most of our investments. HR was a trial and error discovery. We didn't invest much at first, but made up for it in later rounds, then balanced it with the investments we made in automation. But for more on how our uh, strategy evolved over time, here's my colleague Beverly. As we mentioned earlier, Team Baldwin selected the Broad Differentiator Strategy. Broad Differentiator focuses on maintaining a presence in every segment of the market. The company works to gain a competitive advantage by distinguishing products with an excellent design, high awareness, and easy accessibility. The R&D produces product designs that keep the product fresh, exciting, and aligned with the customer buying criteria. Products keep pace with the market, offering improved size and performance. The goal of capacity is to expand as higher demand is created. Our rationale for selecting the broad differentiator strategy is best answered by the mission statement, as stated in the Capson Team Member Guide. Premium products for the industry. Our brands withstand the test of time. Our stakeholders are our customers, stockholders, management, and employees. In keeping with broad differentiation, it is critical that Team Baldwin was on the same page. Each department had a goal and a part in keeping our product competitive and fresh. The perceptual map was a great tool for our team to follow each product line as we concentrated on the ideal product positions. As for the research and development team, the focus was to track each product line, offering customers products that match their ideal criteria for positioning, age, and reliability. The marketing department did a great job in aggressively keeping our product in front of the customer by spending on promotion and sales across all segments. Production had a multifaceted task list. In addition to growing capacity to meet the growing demand, production also had to investigate automation levels in an effort to improve margins, as well as keep the contribution margin to a competitive percentage. As expected, finance was responsible for financing the investments through stock issues and cash from operations, supplementing with bond offerings as needed, and when the cash position allowed, finance also had to establish a dividend policy and track stock prices. Goldsmith did an excellent job of explaining creating competitive advantage. According to Goldsmith, companies that continually clarify and reinvent their competitive advantage will have the greatest potential to capture long-term, sustainable financial rewards. Team Baldwin has remained competitive by continually examining and, when necessary, reinventing our strategy, our product, and our company. Goldsmith warns that companies will be under constant pressure to lower their cost structure, increase margins, make better decisions, embrace change, and be capable of spotting trends before they happen. Team Baldwin has asked ourselves all of those questions. Do we lower our prices? Do we create a new environment? Do we take out a loan, etc.? As early as 1980, Porter identified three best strategies for analyzing industries and competitors. Cost leadership, differentiation, and market segmentation. Team Baldwin has stayed true to broad differentiation by focusing on the product uniqueness. As for risk-taking, Team Baldwin learned an interesting fact pointed out by Wade. While it is important to base decision-making on the company's own growth strategy, 
Risk managers need to be aware that no operations takes place in a vacuum. 